right, we're back. There's been a day we didn't film because it was more of the same, but today we're working on the auto water change system. All these valves up top, Dean's hooking up. We had the plumber run the, the line over to here, and we're gonna connect it to our manifold system. And the manifold system is just something we buy at Home Depot, like this. So the sink's been hooked up. Temperature controller is now hooked up. You got hot and cold coming in. It will mix it. It'll put it out whatever temperature we want. That goes down below the sink. Goes right around. And we're gonna tuck that up under the pipe and it goes all the way to where Dean is. We'll go to the other room. We're gonna work on air today as well. Still have a leaky chimney. Doesn't that look great? Here's where we have the new water heater, 80 gallons. We've got it set to efficiency mode. I can put it in the hybrid mode, which is less efficient than efficiency, electric only, or put it in a vacation mode. I can crank this up if I wanted, have it be 125 degrees. I'll leave it at 120. The goal would be hot water coming from here. We mix it down to about 78 degrees going into the tanks. This 80 gallon should last us a very long time. This heater takes any ambient temperature and pulls it in for uh, heat as well, as much as it can do that. It's kind of like a heat pump for a house, except for your water heater. So we used to only have one shutoff for the entire building. Now you can see we have three down there, two right there in case we ever had a leak up in the attic. We put in a, a fridge for cold water and ice. That's got its own shutoff. Yeah, we did put five more over there actually. So there's five more shutoffs. So we went to from one, to 10 shutoffs so we can isolate each individual line. So if you gotta isolate hot or cold going up, if you have to isolate hot and cold going to the sink, if you have to isolate the ice maker, which we had it isolated because we just installed it. But I just wanted to catch everybody up on where we're at so far because we've been working hard enough where I don't pick up the camera and we just do stuff and then we go, oh, we gotta film that. So that's what we're working on right now is getting the filming done. We'll do work, then we'll film more. And uh, yes, in between all this, there was lots more parts runs. Dean did part runs today, I did part runs today. Then we met up at noon and now we're working. We're getting ready to hook the solenoids to our quarter inch line, which is basically ice maker tubing, but I made Cory by the black. So you know. never see the algae junk that grows inside. I've only ever used black, so I, I didn't. I've used it all. Teflon taping. All of the, uh, oh, and you guys don't know what Teflon tape is. That's not really tape that seals the pipe threads. Not as messy, just wraps around. Is it three or five revolutions with the thinner stuff? Because obviously it matters if it's the thicker stuff. Right. How do you know you're going in the right direction, Dean? Because I always go in the right direction. <laughs> you always want to go the same direction that the, the, the part threads in. Yep. And this is obviously overkill. Like my entire store and my fish room I use, in my fish room at my house right now, I use three. The store, I think, uses five. So and we're putting in 16. 16 at least. Yeah, so Maybe more. this is gonna look very intimidating, but realize that one of these might handle 10 aquariums for you. A whole rack. Usually. Yeah, a whole yeah. rack of aquariums, right. and so that, you know, because it's expensive and all of that, but here's how you adapt from the line coming in, which is gonna be, down here with all of those manifolds, it comes right. in to that tiny little line that's gonna to go to a tank. Right. So, I do the threaded thing last. Okay. The reason is if I get any glue on the threads, yeah. then I don't have to worry about it sticking. That'd be a bad time. Part way. Don't get the glue on your hands, don't drink the glue, don't sniff the glue. I'm also one that, I'm, I kind of agree with you, give it a little twist at the end. Uh-huh. Yeah, anyone who doesn't twist, it's wrong. Yeah. I don't know, it just, that's what I like to do. I think it just helps seat the whole thing. I've had, I've had joints before where they didn't have enough. Right. I just saw him got it, get on his hand, it's on camera. Got your finger, I saw it. I saw it too, I felt it too. <laughs> so that what, guy's done, done and What's ready. really nice about these kits, by the way, for irrigation, is that th these basically work as unions. So yes. if this ever leaked or anything, you want to switch it out, you can take that off, buy another part, and you could adapt it to something else. Right. So And you can buy these parts separately. Right. 
and you don't want to get any glue on that flat surface because that's if you do that then this is no longer a, a that's where union. the o-ring is sealing to. yeah it's got that nice o-ring right there it's kind of like using a co2 system it's going to seat really well so we got to make like 16 of these yeah so but this is that this is how we complete it it's basically thread in the adapter uh, we were just talking about whether we use a wrench for this or pliers and we agreed that we just use pliers yep you can use a wrench i just have them round over one of the tips by the way you want to use the least amount of joints possible so in the past before i've had to go from like one inch to three quarter to half to a quarter each one of those could leak and it makes this thing bigger and bigger and bigger as you do it when we hook to the tubing it's just press in yep and, now, and that's a seal yeah it's like a shark bite fitting and we'll the next part you'll see is we'll be building the manifolds that go to tanks but this is how the water supply will happen this is going to thread on there and we just tighten that mm -hmm. and, and then the wires that are there they go into the controller which will be controlled by my phone and i can say turn it on for three minutes and it will allow water to go through that tube now for three minutes so by now, you guys probably know, the lights are controlled by his phone, yep. the heat's by his phone, actually not completely, but kind of. The security system is controlled by, so yeah. if you ever lose your phone, you're like in serious big trouble. Well, there's apps, but yes, I can even open the garage door and I get notified if the garage door opens. That's good. Like, I, I wanted just maximum visibility because there's right. employees and right. that kind of stuff and just know what's going on, so. So anyway, back to it. That's what we're building right now. 15 more to go. A bunch more to go, and uh, then we're going to hook them up and start running some pipe. Now I can help. Wait, are you just eyeballing it? I am. Everything else has been so precise, and that this part? I guarantee you they're within a sixteenth of an inch or less. I might have to, I might have to get out of a tape measure and you can, test You can that. do that. These are going to be the water coming in lines. We get the first maiden voyage, and then we get to uh, diagnose leaks, because almost always, if we put Something. together 80 joints, one's going to leak. So this is like your CO2 or ice maker tubing again. Yep. And just like we showed before, we use a little piece of bent plastic, mm -hmm. rigid airline tubing. I think it's Lee's, is it not? Yep. And that's going to be our valve for water coming in mm -hmm. um, we haven't determined for sure if we're going to have to put a control valve like these on the intake but we'll, we'll, know, we'll know that maybe by the end of the day that's the hope so. got a few more hours to work on it so is this about where that other one was yeah, it's about <laughs> how dare you Like a glove. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's gonna be good. I'm gonna put the T on so you can connect them all in a little bit. Now we gotta do three more.